The following people made this video possible by their generous donations to the channel via Patreon in January. I'd like to extend a special thank you to all contributors, some of which who chose to remain anonymous, and look forward to providing quality content in the future. Thank you. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the lab. In this video, I'll be making dimethyl oxalate using oxalic acid and methanol. Now, oxalic acid is the simplest dicarboxylic acid, a carboxyl group here being this carbon with an oxygen and an hydroxyl group attached right here. This carboxyl group, when attached to anything, means that that thing is a carboxylic acid, and the simplest dicarboxylic acid, or the simplest molecule that has two carboxyl groups, is this right here, which is widely known as oxalic acid. Now, oxalic acid you can find at the hardware store as a tile haze remover or an outdoor deck sort of surface cleaner, so it's actually quite accessible in the amateur laboratory, and uh, esters of oxalic acid don't have quite a few uses in the laboratory, as I'll be showing in some upcoming videos. Anyway, this will proceed through a, a reaction known as the Fischer esterification, which I've done in a previous video, so I won't get too deep into that. But it's essentially the, uh, an alcohol and the carboxylic acid are reacted using an acid catalyst to form an ester and water. And of course, removal of one of the products will drive this reaction, so we could continuously remove water, but this happens to be convenient in that this diethyl oxalate isn't particularly soluble in water and can actually help to drive that reaction. So essentially what I'll do is mix some oxalic acid with some methanol and some sulfuric acid, and then we'll heat that for a little while and make sure that the reaction is driven uh, almost to completion, and then I'll let that cool and crystallize in the fridge for a few hours, and we should be able to isolate some purish crystals of dimethyl oxalate, which I'll be using in some upcoming videos. I'll be performing this reaction on a one molar scale, which means that I'll need 126 grams of oxalic acid. Now this, you might note, does not add up to 126, and that's because what I've left out here in this diagram is that commercial oxalic acid is sold as the dihydrate. So 126 grams of oxalic acid dihydrate will add 90 milliliters of methanol, which is slightly excess of what we need. However, it will help to drive the reaction to completion and uh, prevent any extra oxalic acid from being left in, around in solution, which will help us clean up the products later. Anyway, uh, the sulfuric acid, which acts merely as a catalyst, we can add as little of it as we want. In fact, you could even run this without actually adding any of the sulfuric acid at all, since oxalic acid is fairly acidic. However, it depends on the acidity of that, and sulfuric acid also has a very high affinity for water. And that affinity for water is going to remove water from the picture, which, as you can see, will drive the reaction. So basically, the more sulfuric acid we can add, the better. Unfortunately, the more that we add, the more difficult the product will be to separate, so it's kind of a balance to get a good yield. And I've found that roughly about 40 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid will be sufficient to get a decent yield. So H2SO4, and this is methanol. And that should yield us 118 grams of the dimethyl oxalate, and then the water. This reaction itself produces two moles of water, but since the uh, oxalic acid dihydrate also contributes some water, that's a total of four moles, which is a total of 72 grams of water. And then the workup can happen from there. Anyway, uh, enough of me talking, let's go to the lab and do that. All right, so I've got the required ingredients measured out. I've got 126 grams of oxalic acid dihydrate, which is just a fine crystalline powder. Uh, to that, I'm going to add a stir bar, because we're going to heat and stir this. I have 90 milliliters here of methanol, which I will slowly add uh, into this with stirring to make sure it dissolves, and then very slowly after that, the 40 milliliters of sulfuric acid. So the methanol can go in quickly, get the stirring going. There we go. And then very slowly, the sulfuric acid, and I'm going to turn on the fume hood for this because it's going to get warm and uh, some methanol will start to vaporize out of this. And now to very slowly add the sulfuric acid. And you always want to make sure that you wash out the sulfuric acid containing graduated cylinder uh, very quickly after you use it because it looks just like water until you touch it. <laughs> and then you know for sure that it actually was concentrated sulfuric. So it's best to just wash it rather than leave it hanging around. All right, so what we have stirring here is a solution. It's a whirlwind of crystals of dimethyl oxalate and oxalic acid, uh, stirring around in a solution of methanol and sulfuric acid. Now to ensure that this goes essentially to completion, we want all the oxalic acid to be able to interact. So what we'll do is we'll heat this up to homogenize the mixture and ensure there's no crystals left bouncing around, which of course aren't gonna into that reaction. And once there are no more crystals, this is a completely homogeneous mixture, we can then cool this down 
in the fridge, and uh, we could precipitate all the dimethyl, or sorry, dimethyl oxalate from the solution. And that's simply because the dimethyl oxalate is far less soluble than any of the components in here. In fact, oxalic acid is extremely soluble in water, and both methanol and sulfuric acid are soluble in all proportions with water. So on cooling, pretty much the only thing that's going to precipitate is the dimethyl oxalate, which makes this particular synthesis quite easy. All right, you can see that after about 10 minutes of stirring and heating that the reaction mixture has completely homogenized, and that's good. That means that everything is dissolved and it can now participate in the reaction that we're looking for, which is the esterification. Um, this is just going to stir, and I'm gonna turn the, uh, the heat completely off, and it'll just sit on the warm hot plate and stir and slowly come down to room temperature, and that'll give the mixture time for the uh, esterification reaction to happen, although I can assure you that it is right now almost complete. So what will happen is then this will cool down to room temperature. We may even start to see the dimethyl oxalate crystals coming out of solution already. Uh, however, this will inevitably end up in the fridge or the freezer to get down to zero C so that we can recover the maximum yield possible. Anyway, I'll just let this cool and continue to stir very slowly. And I'll be back in about a half an hour. All right, so after about an hour of stirring and cooling, you can see that this has crystallized into a solid mass. This, I'm just going to pop into the refrigerator really quick to get uh, cool, which will cause the crystals to precipitate as much as they possibly can, at which point I can break this up and then vacuum filter the product. All right, so I just got this out of the freezer and it's very cold now, and you can see that it's solidified into a pretty much uh, solid mass of hard crystals. It's actually sort of soft, I can poke holes into it, but I'm gonna have to break this up and get it stirred up so that I can vacuum filter it. You might be able to see that I've already set up for vacuum filtration right here with just a fretted funnel and a 500 milliliter collection flask. I've also put approximately 50 milliliters of water in the freezer to become ice cold, which we're going to use to wash the filtrate after we've sucked as much liquid out of this as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and break this up and get it into the funnel. All right, now I'll turn the vacuum on and start pulling the liquid out of this. Sorry for the noise, I'm using an aspirator. There we go. Pulling through quite nicely. All right, and then I'll wash it with uh, some water here. I've got some ice cold water. This is approximately 50 milliliters, which with a solubility of 60 grams per liter, this should, uh, lose a maximum of six grams of product, which I'm gonna try and use about half of it and just see how it turns out. There we go, I think that should be sufficient. And then I'll leave this on the filter and uh, suck this for approximately 15 minutes, dry it out as much as possible, and then I'll go ahead and put it on a glass plate and dry it in the usual way. All right, so this has been on the aspirator for about 10 minutes, so I can go ahead and uh, get it out onto the plate now. now this stuff is kind of tricky to dry because it's, uh, its melting point is right on like the 40 or 50 C range. So it can be quite tricky. I've got the crude product here on the steam bath now, and we're just going to gently heat this. It's essentially a double boiler. There's just some water in this electric kettle, and it heats the pan very evenly and gently. Uh, this, you can see, is already starting to melt, and that's because the melting point of the ester, the dimethyl oxalate, is around 50 degrees Celsius, and so this is a good sign that this is a fairly pure product. If it were oxalic acid, it would take about 100 C to start melting it as the hydrate, and then as it dehydrated, it would slowly raise the melting point to around 130 or 150-ish. I'd have to look that up. But anyway, you can see it's already starting to melt, which is a great sign that this product is substantially pure. I'm just going to melt it, which will drive off any of the methanol and help to get rid of the water faster. Once it melts, I'll let it cool down, then we can scrape it off the plate for storage. And you can see the product is readily melting at about 50 degrees Celsius. We can verify that with the iron thermometer. It's 52. For oxalic acid, it would be much, much higher than that. So that's a very good indication that this is the fairly pure ester. Now I'm just going to heat this a little bit more until it uh, completely melts and then maybe hold it as a liquid for about five minutes just to make sure that we're driving off water and other impurities. And then I'll go ahead and let it cool on the plate and we can scrape it up and store it. 
Alright, so we have the molten product here. Um, unfortunately, the previous clip didn't capture, but I did take it off the water bath after it had been sitting on the water bath for about 10 minutes, and now I've got it up on the speaker, which is just supporting it as it cools and gets air underneath it, things like that. And I'm just going to leave this here for a little while, and eventually it will cool and solidify, and we can scrape it up and put it in a bottle. All right, now this has been drying for several hours now, and you can see that it's still quite wet and liquidy, and that is probably a sign that this is a deliquescent material, meaning that it picks up water readily from the atmosphere, and that this is actually getting wetter than it is drier. So it turns out I'm going to have to try and desiccate this in a vacuum desiccator. That's a pretty simple procedure, but unfortunately it takes about a week to get uh, results out of it, so I'm not going to be able to show those results in today's video. However, I can talk a little bit about what this dimethyl oxalate is eventually going to be used for. Since I can't show the final product in this video because it's sitting in the vacuum desiccator and it needs to sit in the vacuum desiccator for about a week, and I did promise a video every week, every Sunday in 2018, I'm going to go ahead and release this video without having the final product in it. I'm, I will, however, have the final product shown in an upcoming video very soon, which uses dimethyl oxalate in a reaction. Now, there's several reactions I have planned for dimethyl oxalate, one of which is super secret and super awesome. I should be able to make some really cool things with it. The other one is for this compound called TCPO, which is a precursor to glow sticks. Now it's used to tear apart uh, hydrogen peroxide in the glow stick material, I believe, to create oxygen radicals which excite a dye where it falls back to ground state. I'm not, I'll save that for the upcoming video. But anyway, TCPO is a uh, is a, an ingredient that you need for it, and it's very easy. It's actually uh, TCPO stands for trichlorophenyl oxalate. Now uh, trichlorophenyl, it's actually the two four six, I believe. So it looks. Something like this. Let me. Anyway, this compound here, like I said, is using glow sticks, and it's made from from the transesterification reaction of a dialkyl oxalate. In our case, it'll be dimethyl oxalate with trichlorophenyl, which is something else I can make in an upcoming video. Since I already did a video on phenyl, and you basically just need to bubble chlorine through phenyl for an extended period of time with a catalyst. So that'll be another video that's coming up in the future. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I hope you uh, enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it because I love chemistry. Uh, if you want to see more of these videos, please press the subscribe button. I'm always looking for more subscribers. You guys keep me going. Uh, if you want to donate to my Patreon account, I'll put a link in the description. If you want to donate a dollar or something like that, that helps me continue to make these videos, and I really appreciate everyone who has uh, contributed so far. Um, also, if you uh, want to follow me on Twitter or something like that, i got a couple of social media links in the description. I'm just now starting out on that, trying out some new things and new ways of communicating with people, and that's been exciting. But anyway, uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching.